So a few months back, I attended a workshop to learn how to print color film, more specifically printing it in the darkroom. And the darkroom in question was Rapid Eye in Shoreditch. So since then, I've spent a couple more sessions in the darkroom, you know, trying to kind of remember what I was taught um, and just practice and, and learn a little bit more about it. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about printing contact sheets, which is what I did recently on a day in the darkroom. So if you don't know what a contact sheet is, a contact sheet is essentially a sheet that shows, you know, all of the photos from a roll of film. So an example of a contact sheet that I printed is this one here from a recent shoot. And if you are into film photography, then you'll have definitely seen a contact sheet before. Um, it's great for making selects, stuff like that, kind of seeing the whole shoot or the whole roll of film in one go and, and being able to work out which photos you want to maybe develop from, no pun intended, print from in this case. So the process that I have been using to print contact sheets has been using this glass holder. You open the glass holder up, you take your negatives in like a clear negative holder or something like that, and you put them face down onto the glass. So once the, the negative holder is open, you place them, you put them so that the right side of the negative is pressed up against the glass. This means that when you shut the glass holder, it, they're gonna be the right way up. You can take them down to keep them in place. I've done that before, but I've also just kind of slotted it in and, and kind of felt in the dark to make sure that it's still in place. Then you place the negative holder under the enlarger, fit the enlarger with the lens, select the aperture for the lens. And then on your exposure time, you're gonna select one second or something small, like a small interval. You turn the lights off, place the paper down, under the enlarger with the lights off. You place the paper with the emulsion side facing upwards on the glass holder, so in the glass holder, so that when you shut the glass holder, it's gonna be bottom of glass holder, paper, negatives, glass. And then get a bit of paper, like a scrap bit of paper or something. Hold it over the negatives, pressure one second to exposure, move it down, one second, move it down, one second, move it down, one second. And that's just to test the different exposure times so that you can work out uh, like a better exposure time to work from. Personally, I usually get to about seven seconds, so I do that seven times and have seven different exposures to look at. Then put my paper into the black bag. So Rapid Eye in particular have like some black bags available in the darkroom, um, but I've also got a bag from Stiltrice. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and I'll link it in the description. It's a like a film changing bag, but it does the same thing because it's a completely dark bag. It's like fully blackout. Um, so, you know, not only can you change your film in there, you can, you know, load it for development, stuff like that. You can also use it to transport like your paper from the dark room into like where, where you need to go printing or something like that. I load it into the black bag and then take it out back into another dark room, which has the machine that you feed the paper to, which then prints it. I'm sure that this process will differ depending on where you're printing, what tools you have available. This is just in particular how I've been doing it whilst I've been at Rapid Eye Darkroom. And once you've done that, you should end up with something a little bit like this and um, that has various exposures. So you can see here it's like overexposed, but towards the top it's, you know, it's a little bit better exposed. And that will give you a good idea of what exposure you need to move forward with. Once you've worked out exposure time, you'll repeat the process, but without the card, you'll just set like, say it's a seven second exposure, you set seven seconds, expose the paper to light for seven seconds, and then you should end up with something like this. It's all had the same exposure times. And then what you can do once you've found kind of like a good exposure is you can have an idea of different exposures. So for example, if I wanted to print more than one of these photos, I know that the exposure here is very different to this one here. So this one is more overexposed, for example. And because of that, it would need a different exposure time to if I was printing this one. And the same thing goes for, you know, colors. If you were shooting on, a, on one roll of paper, different, lighting scenarios and something like that. Maybe maybe one photo was colder than the other. It gives you a clearer idea of maybe um, guidelines, I guess, of what you would need to change when you're printing more than one from one sheet. And then you can work with your contact sheet to get the right colors, you know, set your magenta, your yellows, for example, so that when it comes to printing, you have a better idea of what kind of settings you need to print those photos. And because I've been printing kind of like for the sake of printing and not for projects or client work. I have been very much like using contact sheets to work out which photos I actually wanna print from. I don't know if that is something that happens really when you're working on a client project because you might already have it in mind, but if you don't already have in mind what negative you wanna print later down the line, then having a contact sheet is quite useful to kind of envision how they might look um, and which one might look best when printed. 
So printing these contact sheets was my first time back in the dark room since my workshop, which was in May. And I made so many mistakes trying to remember what you do. Um, one thing that is great about Rapid Eye though is that they are very helpful. You know, you can ask them, they can kind of direct you and send you in the right direction. But an example of me making mistakes was that I forgot to put a lens on the enlarger. And so the first couple of prints I made for contact sheets were completely dark, completely like overexposed. I'll show you an example. So this is an example of <laughs> one of the first ones I made, obviously completely exposed. I just ended up using it as um, a bit of paper to write my notes on in the end. But hopefully, now that I've made that mistake, not fitting a lens in the enlarger is not something that I will do again. If you've watched this channel for a little while, then you'll know that making mistakes is a big part of my practice. And I know that sounds really strange, but you know, I definitely learn from trial and error. I learn from making mistakes, learning what went well, learning what didn't go well, um, not making those mistakes again. It's happened in every aspect of my practice, you know, especially when it came to learning film photography. I've made so many mistakes and those mistakes have definitely made me a better photographer or maybe a more reliable photographer. In, in the long run because I've learned from them and I know kind of, and there's those are set things then you, you always check before you take a photo, for example. Um, so this is a whole new process for me. As I said, darkroom printing is a whole new thing. You know, I'm very, very new to it. So I intend to make a lot more mistakes in a weird way. Um, I'm sure I will. And I'll try and document those on this channel because I always find it useful to learn from other people's mistakes as well. I will be back in the darkroom quite a bit over the next couple of months trying to you know solidify what i'm learning make sure it all sticks so if you are interested in darkroom printing if you're interested in kind of going on this journey with me um, as such then keep your eyes peeled because i definitely will be doing more printing videos on this channel but thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one